I'm Ed Delaney, Director of the Cardiovascular Science and Perfusion Medicine Program at Hofstra. I'm joined today by Dr. Frank Minetta. Today we're going to do a training with the Insitra Ultra 7 French Intraortic Bloom Pump Catheter Kit using the eSIM Pro 2 Dummy. This is Insitra 7 French Intraortic Balloon. Notice the red packaging. It differentiates itself from other balloon companies. Uh, going in and grabbing a balloon, you want to grab the red packaging on all four corners of the balloon, you'll see the size of the balloon. This is a 40 cc balloon. And for this patient, it's 5'5 five, five and over, over 165 centimeters. Each Incitra balloon kit has a sizing guide on the back of the box. Notice the bright red box. It's the balloon pump you're gonna grab when you go into the supply room. On the back, it has the main tray, an accessory tray. You have your arrow adapter, you also have the data balloon pump adapter. The Incitra Medical Ultra IABP catheter kit. The kit includes a main tray, an accessory tray, along with data scope and aero console adapter sets. Each inside your balloon comes with a one-way valve that you're connecting pink to pink and leaving in place until the balloon's inserted. You then remove the syringe. You only pull back 15 mLs. Every inside your balloon is wrapped tightly around the catheter shaft in a pre-designed way to ensure that it always inflates. The insider has a unique exo sheath, which you slide over the balloon for insertion, and it functions like a stabilizer to make maneuvering at the insertion site easier and protect the catheter from kinking. The insider also features a wrapping sheath, which protects the balloon's pre-designed wrapping and is removed after you pull the 15 mLs. You then slide down the exo sheath and leave the soft tip exposed. The Incitra contains two guide wires, a short 50 centimeter guide wire, which can be used for insertion site preparation by only one person, a 150 centimeter guide wire, which can be used for insertion site preparation and catheter insertion. Insertion involves accessing either the right or left common femoral artery. We use a standard landmarks to look at the right superior iliac spine and the pubis symphysis and the femoral artery should be directly there and should feel the pulse. An alternative access is to use an inside ultrasound. With the bedside ultrasound probe, you're looking for the artery in the vein. You check the compressibility for the vein and the artery should be lateral to it. Once the artery is identified, you scan superiorly to you see the inguinal ligament. And once the inguinal ligament is identified, you're scrolling inferiorly to see the takeoff of the profunda and the superficial femoral artery. It's important to note the calcifications within the artery. If the artery appears to be too calcified, an alternative access should be chosen. The tip of the finer needle should be in the upright position. So when the wire goes through there, it rides the back of the needle tip. Devil up, angle of the needle, less than 45 degrees. Dire out. TEE 
or fluoroscopy can be used for confirmation of the wire in the aortic arch and desynchronizing thoracic aorta. It's important to have a rail over the wire to hold it stiff. So you have a stiff rail on the back and with a twisting motion, holding both the dilator and sheet together, there's a mechanism to turn it so it locks, not pull back. And with a turning motion and a continued stiff rail to push the catheter in there. If there's any question going in there, you can still go there back and forth to make sure the wire goes freely. If the wire is not moving freely, there's a chance that the catheter dilator or tip is bent and you need to restart over. And once that's done, untwist the dilator, remove the introducer, and push back over the wire. Insert the catheter over the guide wire and advance the catheter down the guide wire. Make sure the assistant has the wire in the back and then slowly insert the catheter tip into the sheath using the exo sheath for stability. You're going to sit down and take the catheter, hold the tip where the removal sheath is. As the balloon tip is inserted, pull back the exo sheath and advance the rest of the balloon into the artery in four strokes. Once the balloon is fully inserted, remove the exo sheath, peeling it away. Using TEE or fluoroscopy guidance, advance the balloon tip of the catheter into the descending thoracic aorta up to two to three centimeters of the aortic arch. Now advance the sheath seal over the catheter and lock it. Remove the guide wire and aspirate three cc's of blood from the inner lumen. Then manually flush three to five cc's of flush solution. Now you can remove the one-way valve. Each incitra balloon comes with two connections. One for the McKay data scope, where you'll go pink to pink to the balloon, and then white slip tip goes to the balloon pump console. The second connection is for the Arrow Teleflex balloon. The blue connection goes to the Arrow Teleflex console, and you'll go pink to pink for the balloon. The Incitra intraortic balloon is a non-fiber optic balloon and will require your standard pressure bag setup. Balloon pump tubing is handed back from the field and connected to a standard pressure bag. So this is technically your, your A-line setup, right? And what you want to do is open up your A-line setup, right? When you open that up, you're going to then take this out. Right. And you're going to get this set up for the balloon pump. It's your standard pressure setup for each pressure bag. You can do no heparin. You can put heparin in and remove the heparin in the ICU if that's your standard setup. So once that's connected, hang this on your pressure tubing stand <clears throat> on your balloon pump. Connect the transducer to the transducer holder. Right. You will inflate your bag to create pressure. Until it is green, you will prime your pressure tubing, getting all the air out. They'll hand it off to me, I'll connect it to them. Okay. And then Dr. Mineta is standing up here, will hold this, right? And he will open up the stopcock and he'll flush. Once the balloon pump is started, placement is confirmed, final placement is confirmed with the 
PEE or with fluoroscopy. And then these catheters secured into place. It's probably most important to secure distally with a small amount of play within the catheter itself. So when the patient is moved, there's no pulling back and forth and dislodging of the balloon pump. After this is secured, the proxalin is secured again with silk stitches. Thank you for joining us today at Hofstra University's Cardiovascular Science and Perfusion Medicine program. For more information, go to www.insitra.com.